180 Your Life empowers women who are bereaved and their families to craft the life they love after loss. I'll talk with author Michelle Perimsky about this powerful grief guide today here on Babby's House. Stay tuned. Babby's House is coming your way right now. Welcome to Babby's house where everybody is a member of the family and that includes you. Well, today I have a great guest. Michelle Perimsky has written a book called 180 Your Life. Maybe your life needs a turnaround, a U-turn. Well, her, her, her grief guide, this guide will help you to bounce back, to turn your life around. Maybe you're stuck after the loss of a loved one. Maybe you're stuck after going through tragedy or trauma. Well, this great conversation today, I believe, will encourage you right where you need it the most. So stick around for that. I want to kick today's show off with one of my favorite songs. It welcomes the presence of the Lord. You know, he's with us all the time, but sometimes we just need to recognize his presence. Will you worship with me as I sing this song called The Lord Is Here? In these holy moments, God is moving by his grace. I can see the glory of his presence on each face in the beauty of holiness. No other name compares to our God, to our God. The Lord is Your 
passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. I guarantee you they'll be the most comfortable sheets you'll ever own. I do not like my sheets. I love my Giza Dream sheets. Call or go to MyPillow.com right now to take advantage of Mike's limited time offer. Use the promo code on the screen, and when you buy one set of Giza Dream Sheets, Mike will send you another set absolutely free. That's right, buy one set of Giza Dream Sheets and get another set absolutely free. Choose from a variety of colors in solid stripes and new flannel sheets. Order now. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Michelle Paremsky, she is the author of 180 Your Life. You know what a 180 is. A 180 is a turnaround. It's a U-turn in your life. And it could be that you're stuck, you're stuck in a pit, you're stuck in what I call the devil's D's. You know, disappointment, despair, despondency, depression, bouncing back from the death of a loved one, from debt, from doubt. I mean, listen, there's a long line of things that we need to come, that we need to bounce back from. And Michelle Perimsky has experienced a lot of that. And so she's written this great book called 180 Your Life, From Tragedy to Triumph. She knows about the turnaround. So let's welcome her to Babby's house and hear the beautiful God story. Michelle, I'm happy to have you on the show, my friend. Thank you so much oh, for having me. I'm so honored. We need your story. Oh my goodness, do we need your story. Thank and you. thank you for writing this great book because it is a grief empowerment guide. Yes. And there are eight steps to grief empowerment. Yes. And uh, so many of us are stuck in the pit of grief, you know, and you've been there, and you have a family history of being in that pit because your story is beautiful. Um, even in the midst of grief, somehow God finds beauty in, in, the, in, the, in the mess, doesn't he? Yes. There's, a, there's a, a beautiful message in the, meth, in the mess. There's transformation in grief. Yes, there is beautiful transformation. Yes. So talk to me about your story and what inspired this book. Well, <clears throat> uh, I was married to a, my best friend, and he was a chiropractic doctor, and I was a television producer, and I worked in, the, in network news. And uh, when I was pregnant with our second daughter, <clears throat> excuse me, unfortunately, he took his life. Hmm. And I was just blindsided. I didn't know what to do. My, my first daughter was almost three. She was two and ten months old, and I didn't see it coming. Mm. And I was like, God, how could this happen? I was, I was playing by the rules. And all of a sudden, my dreams of safety, of, of my sweet, loving family, the way that it was, shattered. And I didn't know if God dropped the ball. Um, I thought that was a pretty big ball to drop. And what his, was there any purpose in this? Was this just mm -hmm. random? Were and you a believer at the time? I, uh, yes, I was. Yeah. <laughs> I'd gone to missionary training school. Okay, so you were a certain you. breed of, of, of believer. I mean, you are Christian. You're serving God. Yes. You're a missionary. Well, I was. I'd gone to missionary training school, and then actually um, my father was a network news cameraman, and so I started working with him. So I was 20 years in network news. Wow. And I thought, you know, 
I'm, I'm honoring my husband. Mm -hmm. I love, mm -hmm. I'm backing off of work to be with yes. my children. I'm doing it's what like I feel led to do. It's like perfect picture of a woman who wants to give everything she has to God. And then the bottom drops out. And the bottom drops out. And then what do you do? Yeah. Is what kind God of questions were you facing at that time? God, are, are you powerful enough to take the real pain that is physical, my heart hurt. I was crying 10 hours a day. I didn't want to live, but I had a baby in me mm. and I had a little one outside of me. There was no choice. And I, I really wrestled. I, I told the Lord, I, I love you. I will stay with you because I know you're the safest place to be, but I'm livid. I'm very angry that this has happened. Now, were you angry at the circumstances? Were you angry at God? Well, I was were you angry, angry at, at God. Your at your husband who has taken <laughs> yes. his, his life? Talk to me about that Well, stage. I had great compassion because I felt that in time, I, you know, I just love my husband so much that I understood that um, actually many, many years ago in my 20s, I had tried to take my life. So I understood that kind of pain. So I wasn't livid with him, I just was in great sadness. But with God, I feel that God is sovereign. I know that God is sovereign. And so I thought, well, this wasn't a surprise to you. And here's where I came. Here's where I eventually came. I, I, there's a saying, when you don't understand his hand, trust his heart. I wrote a song called Trust His Heart. And when it, you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. Right. And I just said, I'm going to stay here because I know this is the safest place to be, even though I don't understand why I'm here. And then every night, my girls and I eventually, two months later, I gave birth. Three months after that, my mom lost her battle with breast cancer. Mm. So in five months. So you're in a season. Holy mackerel. And so I just said, Lord, please heal our hearts and minds and help us to trust you. Heal our hearts and minds. That was my simple prayer. Heal my heart and mind. Help us to trust you. And God, I have that plaque, um, Jeremiah 33, 3, which says, call to me and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Yes. So I just kept calling to the Lord. Yes. Help me, help me, help me to live a life that is vibrant and healthy and strong you know, for my children. You know, that is uh, a vital part of the first steps of getting unstuck. Yes. is calling on God, continuing to just call on God, call on God, whether it's a question, whether it's a confession, whether it's his word, but to be in constant communication with God because he says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call on me mm -hmm. and I will answer you. That's right. His first promise is I'm listening. That's right. I'm here. Right. I will answer you and I will show you. That's right great and mighty things that you don't know. Exactly. And sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Right. We're, we're clueless as to how to get out of the pit that we're in. But he says, call me, I'll answer you, I'll show you, I'll deliver you. And you begin to walk in that place and he began to keep, I mean, he always keeps his promises, but you began to see his promises becoming fulfilled in your life. Yes. So. 180 Your Life, this book was really me documenting, because I come from 20 years of network news journalism, documenting what God was showing me, interviewing people in uh, experts in health and wellness. Mm. I started to research what are the best steps that I can take to empower my life, um, both physically, mentally and spiritually, because you have to heal the whole self. You can't launch into the next chapter of your life after loss when you, I liken it to, my father was from Poland and when he, and he was uh, there during World War II as a boy. And when, Pol when Warsaw was destroyed, the buildings were in rubble and the people of Warsaw for 15 years cleaned the bricks and rebuilt their buildings as they had been to say, we were not defeated. Yes. And I think we have to do that in our lives. We have to clean the bricks of our broken dreams. Yes. One by one. One by one and build a monument of hope to say, we have not been defeated. That's the right. Lord is here and here is the, the real hope that's yes. available. And that's what 180 Your Life is. It's the stories of cleaning the bricks and practical steps. We have eight steps of empowerment. Empower your ground zero, creating peace in the midst of chaos, healthy boundaries, um, forging your team. So instead mm. of just 
it is important to sit and talk about loss, but I think you need a common goal. You, a team works together toward a common goal. So initially we say a 5K. Let's, 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 cut, let's camp there for sure. a second. Let's camp. Um, because oftentimes when we are going uh, through grief, we tend to withdraw. Right. And we tend to be a lone ranger. Yes. And we soak in our, in our pity. Nobody understands me. Nobody gets my pain. And so we withdraw at, from life, from people, from stimulation. But you tell us in your book, 180 Your Life, that we need a community of people around us. You need a team, and you train, and then you triumph. Let me tell you, when you are going through loss, your body puts out a hormone called dopamine. And it is a connecting hormone that it keeps us in community. And when you've gone through a loss, you have the dopamine has stopped and your brain is on withdrawals like from cocaine. Hmm. Dopamine lights up the same part in your brain as cocaine. So we get addicted to it and it keeps us in families. But when you're going through that loss, it's actually physical and you're going through a major withdrawal. And you need to know how to empower your body, what supplements to take, what healthy things that you can do. You need some movement. So there are physical supplements, I mean like vitamins yes. and supplements that we yes. actually need yes. that will help us bounce to nourish back from your grief. body. That's powerful. So being in community gives you another source of dopamine in your, that your body naturally produces. So you've, that you're in that, you're getting that connecting hormone in your body. So we need each other. We need, we, phys we genuinely need each other so that our bodies are healthier. And then we train our bodies. And, and when you're training your mind, your body, your spirit, you're actually accessing those feel good, feel good hormones. Yeah. And then when you're crossing a finish line, you're accessing that um, sense of accomplishment, which engages you with your future. Yes. And then when you wow. help others, you are, there's something actually called a helper's high where your body emits the same um, endorphins as when you exercise. Yes. So when you help others, you're just, you're, you're doing the, what the Bible tells us to do and it's really, it's physically healthy for you. You know, God has created an amazing body. Yes. Mind, soul, body, spirit. Yes. It all works in tandem for ultimate health. Yes. And well-being. Mm -hmm. So you've created eight steps to bounce back from grief. Um, and we talked about the first two. Give us another one. Share another okay, one. Okay, so us. it's Empower Your Ground Zero, Forge Your Team, Train Your Body, Mind, and Spirit. And then it's Cross Your Finish Line, Attaining Your Goal, um, Living Your Legacy by Helping Others, and Unveiling Your Triumph, which is you have a celebrational dinner to honor your loss, to mm. honor your journey, and to have accountability of where you're going next. Let's talk about that, because oftentimes, at least in our Western world, mm -hmm. we tend to squash our pain down. We, we want to numb our pain. That's right. We want to act like it doesn't exist. Right. We want to drink ourselves. Get it over our, quickly. That's right. And um, I'm cool, I'm fine, right. I'm strong. But on the inside, we are falling apart. Yes. So when we come back from this break, we want to talk more about that. Um, these, these eight um, overcoming, empowering steps are so powerful and so important. I'm talking today with um, the author of 180-Year Life, From Tragedy to Triumph by Michelle Paremsky. It's a beautiful guide with eight steps to empower your life after uh, losing a loved one, losing a job, losing um, whatever is important in your life, it's all, if it means something to you, then it means something to God. So stay tuned. When we come back after this break, I'll talk more with Michelle Perimsky and this great book called 180 Your Life. Stick around. We'll be right back after this. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. I tried every pillow out there and nothing worked. 15 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patent and fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I back my pillow with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I really like the fact that it was made in the USA. I think that USA products are a better quality product. I've tried a lot of other pillows and nothing's worked like my pillow. 
I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow, and to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For a limited time, you get premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, and that's the lowest price in history. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The Go Anywhere pillow is so easy to just roll up and take anywhere I want to go. The My Pillow Topper, for the first time, has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the My Pillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. When I got My Pillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. My Pillow helps me get a good night's sleep so I can do my job in the morning. Go to MyPillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. For example, you can get my premium MyPillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Well, welcome back to Babby's House. I'm talking today with Michelle Perimsky, the author of 180 Your Life. And Michelle, you were talking to us about the, the power of uh, building a legacy and living your legacy and thanking God for the people in your life who have paved the way. I have it in my life, and I know you have it in your life because you were telling me about some of the women in your life who have gone through um, bereavement, through widowhood, through war, through pain, yes. all kinds of challenge, and they bounced back. Yes, they did. They did Tell more than bounce them. back. They created a monument of hope to help others. Tell us about them. Well, um, my father was from Warsaw, Poland, and he actually passed away three weeks ago. And mm. his, wow. he has this amazing legacy that he instilled in me. He was a Bergen, as a Catholic, he was a Bergen Belsen concentration camp survivor. And his mother, he, his mother, and his sister were taken first to Auschwitz and then Bergen Bells and their father was taken by Nazi soldiers. When I was nine years old, my Polish grandmother sent me this pillow from Poland. Mm. And she she had rheumatoid arthritis. Her hands look like this. Now, did she needlepoint this? Did she, she craft did, this? She did, with her hands like this. Mm, Michelle. And she May had I? gone, yes, she had gone to Auschwitz. She had been to Bergen-Belsen. She had become a widow. She was in the worst of circumstances. And what did she do? While her hands were gnarled, every one of these little blocks here takes six stitches. Mm. And she wanted to oh create something beautiful for me. And it was her legacy. She, she really didn't speak English well at all. And she wanted to communicate to me, now I'm sharing it with you, that she was sowing t seeds of sowing in tears. And now we reap in joy to give this example to others that you can make beauty out of loss. And Michelle, what kind of strength do you gather from that? I remember when I, I came back from the memorial service of my late husband who had taken his life and I was sitting there pregnant, seven months pregnant with my little one and I looked at my dad and I went, I don't know if I can do this. Mm. And my father looked at me and he said, your grandmother went to a concentration camp. You will do this. And I thought, you're right. She was a warrior. I have to honor this legacy of being a warrior. In fact, my, my father's aunt, she went to Ravensbrück as a Catholic. And when she came back to Poland, Poland, Warsaw was mostly destroyed and all the buildings were shelled out. And they came back and lived in these shelled out buildings and she wanted Christmas ornaments at Christmas time. So she took toothpaste tubes, which were made out of metal at the time, and chocolate wrappers, and she made this little girl and the oh little girls, goodness. you know, she has a hoop to play with, because remember back then they would play with the hoops? Yes, like a hula hoop or and whatever. And this is really, this goes on our Christmas tree every year, mm. and I wanted to share it with you. Oh my goodness. Because we tell the story that no matter what happens to you, you trust God and you keep the innocence of your heart, your childhood wonder. So this woman who'd seen the worst, the worst of humanity, she crafted a little girl with her skirt flowing in the wind to mm. say, 
You may have taken me through the most difficult parts of life, but you have not defeated me. Yes. I have kept my wonder. Yes. I have kept my discovery. Yes. And I've kept my exploration in God and in yes. life. She was a strong woman of faith. And so I'm here to tell you, so what did I do with my loss? I created the 180 Year Life Program. This is my monument of hope to say, hey, whatever life throws at you, here are practical steps um, experts in health and wellness yes. and grief recovery. Yes. I interviewed people like a journalist would who've gone through unbelievable mm. loss so that you have a, a roadmap yes. to post-traumatic growth, yes. which is an actual study at Yale and University of North Carolina, my alma mater, of people who've gone through massive loss and ha it has launched them, not to PTSD, which does happen, but to PTG, post-traumatic growth. They're living their mm. most purposeful, PTG. most dynamic I life. I love that term, PTG. Let's do a roadmap to that. There is hope. There is a tremendous amount of and hope. And thank you for coming today to tell us about that. Thank tell us how you. we can get more information about your books and about you and your... You can visit us at 180yourlife.com. We have a sister nonprofit, 180yourgrief.org. It's the only widow empowerment center that's full-time in Atlanta, Georgia. It's faith-based. Oh, so powerful. So we have a community and a curriculum, and you can find us all at 180yourlife.com. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for being my guest today on Babby's thank House. You. Amazing, amazing uh, material, and you've encouraged us today. And thanks for bringing this beautiful memento from your grandmother. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's an honor. And thank you, my dear friend, for watching Babby's House today. It always brings us great joy to know that you're watching, and hopefully, you are encouraged and you have hope to face whatever it is that is in your life today. God is bigger, God is greater, and He will empower you. And you can say all things through Christ. You can survive. You're an overcomer to Jesus Christ. Well, thanks again for watching Babby's House today. I'll see you next time. Until then, God bless you real good. That's our prayer. Bye-bye.